Hi, this is David Gimberlein with Kata for Self-Defense, and this is your first karate lesson. This is designed for people who have never taken karate before, or possibly students who are not in school right now, and uh, the way it turns out in karate, if you uh, refine and perfect your basics, your most simple moves, you, it's really the clue to the most advanced concepts. So anyway, in traditional karate, the style I work with is called Shotokan, or my own style called Shotoru Goshijutsu, uh, which means we use the kata and the body dynamics of Shotokan. It's a very traditional style, and as a traditional style, there are rules and etiquette about how to stand, how to move, so we'll go through those. This video is designed for you to train along, so uh, please get yourself some space and follow along. Uh, start out with is an informal bow. You put your heels together, with your toes out, you stand straight, uh, you bow from your hip, and uh, we'll go over a formal bow next time. Uh, pick up one foot <clears throat> and go around with your ankle and toes. Uh, rolling out your joints is the number one thing you can do to reduce joint injuries. It helps loosen up the muscles, tendons, ligaments surrounding the muscle. I'm sorry, the joint, and it helps round up your knees, and it helps to lubricate the joint. The synovial fluid switch, other way, created by the sacs of bursa that surround the major joints. Feet apart, around with your hips. Switch, other way. We're going to go around with our arms. Make sure there's nothing in your way that you're going to hit. So look around. Around with your arms. I like it if you use your legs to try to pump your arms around. It turns out in karate, the more you use your legs, the better everything will be. Switch, by the way. Cross. Twist. I consider this twisting to be one of the most important stretches. It helps to keep your spine supple and mobile. It's one of the things that goes away as you age. And you want to be able to continue to look behind you and move throughout your life. Kick up your heels. This is a non-impact way of trying to get some blood movement in your muscles. The number one thing you can do to reduce muscle injuries, get your blood moving before you do any kind of a workout or exercise. Uh, toes out with your heels in. Squat all the way down and exhale. You want your knees pointing the same way as your feet. Come back up, down and exhale, back up, down, back up, down, back up. Down, back up, down, back up, and down. Put your feet apart a little bit. We call this a kibidachi stance, or a kibidachi. Duh. It's about two hips distances wide, maybe two and a half. Try to make the outside edges of your feet parallel, so your toes point forward. Many people make the mistake of putting the knees way out too far. They just belong kind of between your hips and your feet. Bend your knees, bend your hips, stretch forward like you're trying to touch your elbows down to the floor. And then stand up, push your hips forward and look back behind you. Forward, back, forward, back. Reach over one shoulder and push one hip forward. Switch. Side. Put one hand up behind you and one across the top. Switch. Around in a circle like you're trying to touch your tummy to your thigh. Then reach up behind you. Switch. And 
and stop. Turn facing this way. This is basically a front stance, but when they do this, they do say thrusting to the side. Switch right away. Try to let the weight settle down onto your back foot. Don't worry about straightening your leg out too much. It's kind of wherever it feels comfortable to stretch. Switch out of the way. Now stretching deeper. Step out a little bit further. Let your front knee bend. Let your leg go out as far as you can behind you. Ball of your foot. Drop your hip. Reach up. Big deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Open your arms like you're holding a giant ball. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Twist, look over your right shoulder. Touch your head to the floor. Play your front foot. Now you can straighten your leg, stretch down. Reach over to the other side. <clears throat> Stretching deep, bend your front knee. Try to kind of keep your back foot flat if you can. It'll be a thing later. Ball your foot, drop your hip. Reach up. Open the arms. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Wiggle your fingers. Twist, look over your left shoulder. Touch your head to the floor by your front foot. And again, you can stretch down your straight leg. We're going to drop down underneath. Some people find this very difficult. You can use your hands. You need to put a hand behind you for balance, you can. Uh, in some of our other videos, we're going to work out in a hallway. You can use a hall for stability. Switch, switch. Try to get this foot flat. Try to make this foot point straight up to the ceiling. Switch. Try to make your knee point out the same way as your foot. Switch. 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 And switch. Stay on this side. Rotate over like you were when you were facing to the side. And then continue over. You're going to use your left leg to hold you up. Kind of a straight line from your knee to your heel. Uh, extend your right leg out behind you. Let your hip drop towards the floor. Back. Over. Back. Over. Back. Over. And back. Switch away. All the way over. Let the outside of your thigh drop towards the floor. Back. Over. Back. Over. Back. Over. And back. Pull your feet in. Squatting. Pressure out against your knees, so again, they face the same way as your feet. If you can, sit with your back nice and straight rather than hunched. Put your feet out behind you like an arch. Looking up at the ceiling, breathe in deep through your nose, out through your mouth. Pushing back, try to touch your chest to the floor. So some flexibility takes a long time to acquire. You have to actually stretch your muscles out and convince your body that it's okay to move. Some flexibility you can just learn if you allow yourself to try. So this is an example of a stretch that when I first tried it, I'd get down this far and I'd be like, oh, oh, oh. And one day I realized that that was mostly in my head. I was holding myself up. The floor is right here. So if you can take a breath and let yourself sink against the floor, you can get a lot of 
uh, more range of motion. Well, that doesn't work every day. Some days I'm a little tighter than other days, but it is an example of something where I made a huge amount of progress in a stretch uh, just by willing it to happen. So pull your feet in, so you're squatting again. Straighten your legs, stretch down towards the floor. Roll up, run with your hips in a big circle. Switch, other way. Side to side. Pick up one knee and squeeze it in towards the middle of your chest. You're trying to get some stretching here and learn to balance on one foot. Try to keep your support leg bent. Switch, other side, squeeze your knee in, 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 in. Switch, switch, keep your spine straight and tall, switch, and switch. Reach around behind, grab an ankle, pick your leg up, switch, switch, and switch. She got your legs. If you have a gi, this karate uniform, it is proper etiquette to turn. Straighten your uniform. <coughs> if you do not have a uniform and you're just wearing sweats, that's just fine. I will do a couple workouts where I just wear sweatpants and a t-shirt. Anything that you're comfortable is fine. Eventually, I think the belt kind of helps. So you want pressure against your lower stomach quite often in karate and uh, the belt gives you something to push against. Okay, uh, feet together, bow. Uh, feet apart. You want your feet to be about hip distance apart, kind of at a natural angle. So don't try to have your feet too straight. Don't let them flop out to the side. Uh, slightly outside straight is fine. Uh, we call this natural stance. Some people call it hachichigachi, which I believe means figure eight stance in Japanese. Uh, some people say zentai, ready stance. And we sometimes call it second position. Did I already say that? which I think actually came from dance. It's similar to uh, uh, first position, second position in dance. But anyway, uh, as long as you stand like this, try to keep your spine nice and straight and tall all the time. You want good structure. You're gonna make a fist, pull your elbows in with your palms up, touch your fingertips to the pads of your hand here, roll them in, put your thumb over the top of your first knuckle, put your hands out in front. You do not have to turn your hands all the way over. This tends to tighten your shoulders and elbows. You want those to be soft and relaxed. Slightly less than straight is fine. You're gonna pull your right hand back and leave your left hand out. Now you're slowly gonna exchange your arms. Both elbows rub along the side of your body and you twist your fists way over at the end. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna do ten from the side, but you're just gonna do ten more facing straight ahead. Imagine in this position, your energy is pushing forward from your center towards the target. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, when you move, you want to try to keep your store, your torso nice and stable. So, <clears throat> an obvious example is don't let your shoulders then rotate from side to side. So you do not want to be like this when you're punching. You want to be straight right now, learning how your torso should be stable and when you punch. Less obvious, but still worth working on, <clears throat> is this shoulder shouldn't move back and then forward and then back. This shoulder stays here while you punch. So uh, you get used to the energy hanging on the front of your body when you punch. Don't pull this apart, it actually makes you weaker in almost all instances. I'm gonna try and go a little quicker when we punch. So maybe shake out your arms a little bit. <coughs> you can work out your feet a little bit. All right. So 
Sometimes people call this vibration. You're going to use your feet to drive your hip forward to punch the target. And there are many small details about this that are not good. Uh, one is if people do a wind up before they start, don't do that. And then they throw their hip far forward. And by the time they get to the target, their hip is moving backwards again. That's a little backwards for body mechanics. You want to try to use your legs as much as possible. So what I want you to do is pretend the energy is coming out towards the target and use your feet to drive and just make sure that when you get there, you are also still driving towards the target. So punching a little sharper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Run up here. <clears throat> We're going to try some with speed or you ki. Uh, ki is a short, loud yell. It does many things. One of them is that it helps uh, air move through your lungs. One of them is that it maybe boosts your adrenaline, boosts your mental outlook a little bit, gives you a little bit more assertiveness. Uh, it may scare or slightly weaken your attacker, but as it happens in karate, we ki often when we're going with speed or intensity. So uh, if there's other people around in your house, you don't want to wake them up, but uh, it is kind of a fun thing to do. Put your left hand out right on your side, snap your hip and punch and ki. Very good. Bow. Show your legs. All right. So uh, we're in a little bit of our front stance. A front stance, the idea is like if I'm pushing against something heavy, a wall, I have my foot behind me, I'm driving towards the target. But if you take that surface away, my stability is very poor, I'm very tippy. So they take this part and they straighten it up while maintaining forward pressure in your legs. So a thing that often gets misinterpreted is that uh, stiffer and straighter is stronger. Uh, and in this case, that's not true. I do not want this straight when I'm uh, standing or punching. For that matter, I never want this straight when I'm standing or punching. Both legs should be bent and useful all the time. So in this instance, your back foot kind of points towards the front. It's maybe out at 30 degrees. It depends on your flexibility. Some people have to be out a little bit further. Some people are very flexible and they can put it straight, but don't do that. It, it makes you really tippy. Um, so you want it kind of out at a 30 degree angle. So there's sort of a triangle between your knee, your foot, and your heel for stability. <coughs> so anyway, this is a front stance, also called a zenkutsu, or zenkutsu, zenkutsu that usually means stance. Um, and the terms in Japanese, the theory is that if you keep using the Japanese terms, you could go anywhere around the world and people would understand what you meant. When they say, you know, Zenkutsu, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I should be here. And uh, uh, there are three or five major stances in Shotokan, and then there's a few odds and ends that we don't do very often, but they're still in there. So today, we're only going to go over front stance. You already know this. This is truly a stance, this natural stance. Uh, so that's two. Some people would call this a stance. It's more of a, an attention position, but it's possible. This is often done with your toes together when used as a stance in karate or kata. <clears throat> but anyway, stepping out with your left leg, just kind of see you want your structure to be straight up and down. You want this leg to be pushing forward. You want your hips forward. You want your shoulders forward. You want your head up. So a big problem is people try to look down and it wrecks all of this. Your hip moves, your back is moving, the weight distribution moves. But if you were to look down with your eyeballs at your knee, you shouldn't be able to see your toes. If you do this, you can see your toes. But if my knee is straight, the, oh, there's my toes. I have to bend my knee a little bit more. So especially for beginners, this seems to be a problem. 
but the more you work at it, the stronger your legs will get. So, uh, to start out with, this is kind of a drill I use a lot for beginners, but also for small spaces where you don't have a big training hall to move up and down in. A uh, training hall is generally called a dojo. Uh, it's kind of a school that studies do, but do is the way. Uh, traditional systems study uh, an art not just for the technique, but also for character development to try to make yourself a better person, to try to build your confidence, to try to uh, build your uh, self-analysis, that kind of thing. But anyway, uh, I want you to put one hand to your side. Your left one is fine. Put your right one out. You're going to do two punches like this. You're going to go one, two, then you're going to put your foot out, three, just like that. And then pull back and leave your arm out. One, two, three, back, one, two, three, back, one, two, three, back, one, two, three, back, one, two, three. If you guess the wrong leg, it doesn't matter for this drill. It's more important that your body goes forward and that you're straight. Uh, it is ideal for this drill if you match your hand and foot so the same one's in front. But if you screw up, don't worry about it, you're doing fine. One, two, three, back. One, two, three, back. One, two, three, back. One, two, three. I do want to point out, I guess I should have at the beginning of this drill, I want you to do all three counts with the same click. So it goes one, two, three, and not one, two, three, and then you punch after. Punch right away and make your foot catch up. <coughs> Front kicks. Uh, normally, I have something to kick. So very lightly, we're going to kick your cupboard door or the side of the wall very lightly just to show your striking surface on a front kick, which is the ball of your foot here. So you have to pull your toes back and let the ball of your foot hit. Um, so that's your striking surface. And the little drill I make people do is go tap, 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 tap. Please don't do it very hard. It's just a striking surface to get used to. If you are fortunate enough to have a heavy bag or a, a kicking shield, something to kick, that's good, but this is just for practice. Other foot, tap, tap, kick, tap, tap, kick, tap, tap, kick. So, let's see. <clears throat> when you do a front kick, they often talk about it uh, like a whip, and eventually it's going to be, it's a snapping action. So you have to get a good coil, you have to pick your knee up, you have to extend the ball of your foot out and back when you kick, but ultimately this leg is in charge, in your center, and your leg goes right along. So the handle is more down here on your thing, you're going to snap your foot up like it's a towel or a whip, this goes out and back. Uh, but before we do that, we have to kind of learn the parts. So here is the first part that I like to teach a lot. You're going to put your hands here, your solar plexus, and put them out in front of you, and you're going to bend your knees. You're going to pick up one knee so it touches your hand. Try to keep your shoulders down, your elbows out, your body straight. One, and down. Two, other leg. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. There you go. Go around with the guts a little bit if you want, or whatever stretch you think you need. Uh, it is important when moving to be able to keep your torso stable. Quite often, when people pick their knee up, for instance, they switch to one side, or they drop, or they hunch. So please don't do any of those things. Try to keep your body straight and tall. Imagine somebody's lifting, lifting, lifting as your knee comes up. Slightly let your hip rock out in front of your foot uh, because at the point of impact, you don't want your hip back when you hit 
let it glide forward. <clears throat> so we're going to work on the next part a little bit, and then we're going to put them together. On this part, I want you to grab hold of your knee and rock back and forth as if there was a rod coming through your hip here. Hang on, rock, rock. If you have a lot of difficulty with this, especially make sure that fifth, it is fine to hang on to something and practice. It'll give you a little extra stability. So touch a countertop or the wall or a chair. Switch to your other foot. Can't, I don't have a hand. Rock, rock, rock. So this part's nice and stable, okay, as you move. <clears throat> then for practice, again, still holding onto the wall, you're gonna go one, two, three, expand and contract. Just let your foot out. One, two, three, expand and contract. One, two, three, expand and contract. Other foot, pick it up. Rock, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, sorry, I have an injury on this side. Makes it harder. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three. All right, we're going to put those ideas together. You're going to stand here. You're going to pick your knee up to your hand and put it down once on each side and one kick on each side. So it goes one, two, three, four. Throughout the kick, please make sure your knee comes up to your hand, your leg extends and recoils and comes back down. Don't let your leg drop before your foot is back. <coughs> Here we go. Knee, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good job. All right, we're gonna try moving forward now with that same idea. Uh, I will show a couple this way, and then I'll go back and forth this way a little bit. It'd be nice if you had room to do four steps. If you don't, then you just don't. But you can also be in a very shallow stance. So you're gonna have one foot in front, you're gonna have your knee bent. You're gonna pull your leg up and go one and step forward. Two and step forward. Three, kick, step forward. Four, kick, step forward. Okay, everybody got it? The if you have some experience in karate already and you're good at keeping your hands out, you don't have to have them here. You can convert to having them out in front inside of the fighting position, but we'll talk about that more later. But I find this to be a little more useful than people that let their arms dangle or put them to the side. So anyway, coil, coil, kick, kick. One, two, three, four. Turn, because we don't have room, I guess. One, two, three, four. Turn. One, two, three, four. Turn. When you turn, move your back leg over and then pivot. You have to move it over two hip distances. Because if I'm this way, and I move my foot over one hip distance, and I turn, I'm in line. So on this turn, you reach over, and then you pivot. You reach over, and you pivot. Coil your knee. One, two, three, four. Good job. Now, we're going to put together the two techniques that we learned so far, the front kick and the step and punch in a front stance. So you're gonna start out with your left foot and left hand out. You're gonna coil your knee up and do a front kick while this hand's in here. So you're gonna go one, squeeze, two, punch. Do it again. One, squeeze, two, punch. One, squeeze, two, punch. One, two, one, two, 
One, two. So this is a little bit of an advanced thing, but I will tell you because a lot of people make this mistake. They let their arm go soft. Your drawing arm here should be wrapping into your spine and the inner part of your arm and the inner part of your leg kind of relate. So if people are kicking this way, it usually means their body is also letting go when they try to kick. And you can fix that by squeezing this in a little bit, in, 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 right as you kick and as you punch. So this will keep you more stable sideways. Also, squeeze, 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 go. It'll give you a little bit better sense of your balance. Continuing forward, front kick, oizuki. Maigiri oizuki. One, kick, punch. Two, three, four. Turn. One, two, three, four. Good job. With speed. Ready? stepping that you can practice, step and punching way across, and then front kicking, either from here or from a stance. And you learned a combination on your first day to do a combination where you kick and punch, that's very good. Anyway, write to me with questions or suggestions uh, at gimberline at hotmail.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube videos. And I hope that everybody keeps training, keeps healthy, and keeps active. Thank you.